In this video, we'll explore the database Scopus. Specifically, what Scopus is, what information Scopus indexes, why you would choose it to search the biomedical literature, and how to conduct your search. Let's get started. Let's start with exploring why you would use Scopus. Scopus is a database of citations and abstracts from the following subjects, the life sciences, social sciences, physical sciences, and health sciences. In addition to literature published in U.S. journals, Scopus also indexes a wide range of journals published outside of the U.S., making it a useful resource for global information. Because Scopus contains literature from so many fields across the sciences, it's a good place to search for topics that are interdisciplinary in nature. In addition to the bibliographic information found in most databases, Scopus also contains research impact metrics from the impact of a single paper up to the impact of an entire organization. Finally, everything in Scopus is linked, author names, affiliations, research subjects, etc so you're one click away from anything you might want to know. To open Scopus, visit our library website at library.unthsc.edu. Select Scopus from the drop-down menu, then click the green button to the right of the search bar to open Scopus. If you aren't already logged into our resources, you'll be prompted to log in with your EUID and password. On the webpage, look for the words Start Exploring. Below that, you'll see options for three types of searches, documents, authors, and affiliations. Let's start with a document search. Many of the skills you use to search in other databases can be applied to Scopus, but let's do a quick refresher. First, identify your concepts. If you wanted to learn more about the effects of air pollution on inflammation levels in the body, your main concepts would be air pollution and inflammation. Second, consider Boolean operators. Think about what relationships you want between your concepts. In this case, I want Scopus to retrieve every paper that discusses both air pollution and inflammation, so I'll use the Boolean operator AND between my concepts. Third, don't forget phrase searching. Scopus allows you two different types of phrase searching, loose phrase and exact phrase. In a loose phrase search, the words must be found together in the database, but this allows for various forms of the words, such as singular versus plural. To indicate a loose phrase search, place quotation marks around your phrase. If those variations for a loose phrase yield you too many inaccurate results, try an exact phrase search by placing brackets around the phrase. Fourth, can you truncate any of your terms effectively? Truncation is a technique that allows you to pull in variations of a word without having to think of and type out each variation. To truncate in Scopus, enter the root of the word followed by an asterisk. This will tell the database to retrieve every instance of that root. In our example, truncating inflammation after the T will yield results with both inflammation and the word inflammatory. Don't truncate too early in the word, though, or you may end up with a lot of irrelevant results. Once you have the concepts laid out the way you want, hit the blue search button to run your search. Now it's time to look at the filter list on the left side of the screen to see if there are any relevant filters you should use. Be careful, though. If you use too many filters, you'll end up with nothing. In addition to document searching, Scopus has many unique features you may find helpful. Scopus differs from other databases in the amount of author information provided in the profile, including research impact. Let's explore an author search together. To get back to the main search page in Scopus, click on the Scopus logo on the upper left part of the page, beneath the HSC logo. Now click Authors to switch to an author search. Depending on the author, you may need to try your search with a first initial rather than the author's full first name. Select the appropriate name from the list to view the author's profile. On their profile, you can explore the documents they've published, how many times they've been cited, and what their H-index is. 
Don't forget that everything is linked. If you see that a number of citations have been listed for a document, you may click that number to view those papers. Furthermore, Scopus allows you to search by affiliation and funding source. The Affiliation tab is located next to Documents and Authors if you'd like to get an overview of the research conducted by an organization. Finally, to search by funding source, click on the Document Search and look for the Search Within drop-down menu, which will allow you to change what field you're searching. Select one of the funding fields, enter the funder information, and hit Search. That concludes our video on the basics of Scopus. I'm Laura Haygood from the library. We hope this has been helpful. If you need additional support with your search, please contact us at askalibrarian at unthsc.edu.